Now, this week we have once again been ever so powerfully reminded just how far we still are from what one, one would call principled politics. I would not go as far as talk about ideology because that would be expecting too much. You see, when Kenyans fought for a return to multipartism, they must have imagined that the new dispensation would usher in real choices, that the political parties would be so uniquely distinct as to make choices meaningful. They must have imagined that finally they would be presented with differing policy platforms from which to choose each time they went to the ballot. But nearly 30 years later and five elections down, election cycles are as choiceless as can be. So meaningful is the whole, so meaningless, I should say, is the whole affair that politicians change parties as easily and as frequently as they do their clothes. On the most part, political parties are run like personal fiefdoms and cults, and the departure of one or two prominent politicians often means the effective death of a party. And events of this last couple of days have demonstrated yet again just how loose, fickle, and shameless this so-called political party system really is. And I will start with NASA, the opposition juggernaut that gave Jubilee a real run for its money in 2017. So formidable was the opposition coalition that it scooped about half of the presidential vote in an election they even claimed to have won and which was later nullified by the Supreme Court. The history of that divorce that was finalized this week is out in the public, and I won't bother rehashing it. But what is more intriguing is the action that was taken by, th by three of the coalition partners, Ford Kenya, ANC, and the Wiper Party this week. They signed the divorce papers, effectively bearing NASA, but immediately announced that they were moving house to a new outfit they now call the One Kenya Alliance. Now, in so abandoning NASA, they had, at least on paper, parted ways with their erstwhile partner, ODM. But then, they announced that all other parties, including ODM, would be welcome to join the new outfit. Really? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I mean, if this is not a game of musical chairs, I don't know what is. Just what would the difference be between the new outfit and NASA? Is it not just the same people wearing different badges and pleading with us to see them as a brand new group? What's more, ODM is itself in a marriage of sorts with President Kenyatta's Jubilee Party, or whatever is left of it. The One Kenya Alliance, on the other hand, has stated also its keenness to work with President Kenyatta. In fact, they all are part of the grouping known as the Handshake Team. What was that about? Same monkeys, different forests? Well, that monkey business, it turns out, is not just a NASA problem. Earlier today, uh, today, DP William Ruto hosted what was billed as a UDA parliamentary group meeting at his current residence. Yes, you heard right, a UDA parliamentary group meeting. Of course, what the 100 and something legislators did not tell us is that UDA the party has only one member of parliament in the name of John Joguna Wajiko. And so any UDA parliamentary meeting would, strictly speaking, just have one attendee, the same Kawajiko, as they call him. But no, this is Kenya, and legislators who attended the meeting will tell anyone who cares to listen that they are now in UDA and that Jubilee is a dead party. But they won't quit it just yet. Of course, there's no doubt that the virtual defection of the DP and all these allies uh, may have weakened Jubilee, perhaps irre irreversibly. But to dismiss the party so publicly, yet fail to relinquish its membership, is downright disingenuous. And yes, it is one more demonstration of the vanity of political party membership in this country. Then there is ODM which claims to be the biggest opposition party in the country, but has become such a fierce defender of the Jubilee government that one is reminded of the proverbial mourner who cries more than the bereaved. And of course, there is President Kenyatta, the leader of Jubilee. Just what is his part in all this? Good question. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the summary of the country's political arena with exactly one year and four days before the next general election. 
And when the election comes and goes, this cycle will most likely repeat itself. I think perhaps we should just vote for the individuals we like, whatever the reason, and forget this political party thing until we are able to figure out how exactly to do is right. That's my angle for the week.